Kef just dropped a smaller version of their highly regarded LS50 wireless speakers. So I figured it's time I add some speakers to my desktop setup. These new smaller LSXs would be the perfect choice for not only high-res audio playback, but I can use them while editing these YouTube videos, which is kind of the main reason I wanted to get these. So let's get these things unboxed, get them set up, and I'll share some of my thoughts on the sound quality. But before we jump into it, I'm Shane and welcome to Spare Change. If you're into audio and video tech and want to keep up with the latest in AV gear and highest quality movies, consider hitting that subscribe button for new weekly content. All right, inside we get two accessory boxes, one with the power cords for each speaker, which is the same color as the speaker, along with a quick start guide and other documentation. In the other box, we get a remote control and ethernet cable that's used to tether both the speakers together. But why would you want to tether them together if they're both wireless? Well, we'll get into that later on. Taking a closer look at the rear of the speakers, you'll see that we have one speaker that has only one power and ethernet input. This one's gonna be the slave speaker. The other speaker will be the master. On the rear, you'll have connections for optical, 3.5 millimeter, auxiliary, and even a subwoofer output. There's an ethernet connection for connecting to your home network, and there's a USB input, which you can use to power your cell phone or streaming device like a Google Cast dongle. And then you have the other ethernet connection, which you'll use to tether both of these together using the included ethernet cable. Now, if you're using the cable to tether these together, you'll get slightly better audio quality playback up to 96K 24 bit. If you're gonna forego using the cable and going straight wireless, you're gonna get playback only up to 48K 24 bit. Now these speakers will support files up to 192 24, but it'll get downsampled to 96 24. And I will say that using the cable to tether them together did sound slightly better to my ears. Now moving around to the front of the LSXs, you'll notice that it has a curved baffle, which is supposed to help with sound dispersion. Each speaker has Kef's UniQ driver setup, which means the tweeter sits in the center of the mid-range bass cone driver. The tweeter and bass driver will be time aligned, so imaging will be improved across a wider listening area. If you look closely at the tweeter, it sits behind what Kef calls a tangerine waveguide. This will spread those high frequencies out to cover a wider sweet spot. Driver size is four and a half inches, with a three quarter inch aluminum dome tweeter sitting dead center. One nice touch is the tweeter is a copper color, which if you look around back, matches the port's accent color. So kudos to British designer Michael Young for these little design subtleties. Underneath each driver is a round LED light, which will change colors depending on which source input you choose. White for Wi-Fi streaming, blue for Bluetooth, purple for optical, and yellow for auxiliary. This indicator light will only be active on the master speaker and not on the slave speaker. If there's an issue with connectivity or something else, then the LED will light up on the slave speaker. The LSX is in five different colors. I chose to go with the gloss white since this was the only option that wasn't covered in fabric. I would have preferred a gloss black version, but the black version has a cloth covering and after seeing how these speakers look with fabric, it kind of reminded me of a cat scratching post. Not exactly my thing, but everyone's taste is different. Now I did get these to be used as desktop monitors since they're small. They measure 9.5 inches high by 6.1 inches wide by 7.1 inches in depth. These look right at home next to my LG display. Specs wise, each speaker has two class D amplifiers, two by 30 watts power in the tweeters and two by 70 watts for the woofers. So total system power is 200 watts. They're pretty decently weighted too at a little over seven and a half pounds each. Response wise, the LSXs can go down to 49 Hertz depending on the settings you choose within the app. And speaking of the app, once you connected the speakers, you'll have to download the Kef Control app to get things set up. As mentioned before, I've got these primarily for desktop usage, so I'll be going optical out from my PC to the LSXs. There are two separate apps, but the one we're gonna use for setup is the Kef Control app. Once the app opens up, you'll select the LSXs from the drop-down list. When you see the flashing amber light on the master speaker, you'll have to go into the phone's Wi-Fi settings and select LSX from the Wi-Fi list. Once it's connected, go back in the app and select your home network. When you're connected, you can now rename the speakers if you want. It'll reboot and hopefully say success if all goes well. The app we're using now is the remote control app where you can control music playback. You can power off the speakers by tapping the current input. Tap any input again, and this will turn the speakers off. From left to right is Wi-Fi streaming, Bluetooth, optical, and 3.5 millimeter auxiliary. 
Another nice touch is the LED on the speaker changes color to match the input selection within the app. Purple for optical on the app and purple on the speaker. On the bottom, you can change volume level and go into the settings. If you read closely, it says adjust audio experience to your hiking. I doubt you'll be carrying these while you go hiking. In the basic settings menu, you'll have options for placement, either on a stand or on a desk. Distance from the edge of the table or from the wall. There's an adjustment for how lively your room is, room size, and if you're running a subwoofer. In the expert mode, you get a few extra settings. Desktop and wall mode are here, and you can now adjust the treble and phase. Under bass extension, less will give you a response down to 55 hertz. Standard is 52 hertz, and extra is 49 hertz, depending on speaker settings. You can put this in high pass mode, set the subwoofer crossover, adjust subwoofer gain, and change polarity. When you get all the settings dialed in, you can assign it to a profile. The second app, which is the Kef Stream app, will give you access to your media library. You can check what's new in the news, which doesn't seem to work, your favorites, which I have none. You can grab music from your home's media server if you have that set up. And under settings, there's gapless playback support, but it is in beta, so it may not always work. If you've got music on your device, you can play that back or use Spotify or your Tidal account. Now that we got everything set up, from a sound quality standpoint, using these as desktop monitors, I think they sound amazing. Using these in a near-field situation, it is important you have these at your level or at least have them aiming towards your ears. I have these mounted to a pair of Kanto S4 speaker stands, which angles them towards my head. The stands look nice, but they do wobble, so I'll have to upgrade to something better in the future. After towing them in and playing some music, I distinctly got a clear phantom center image that seemed to come from my LG monitor. The mid-range was a notable standout. One of my favorite tracks to test out speakers with is Classical Thump by Victor Wooten. That fantastic mid-range attack heard from each bass slap was fast and authoritative. Detail and texture shine through with every pick and tap on the strings. Even the low end of the spectrum with such small drivers, obviously won't go shaking the room, that's why there's a subwoofer pre-out, had a definite weighty presence. I never felt the need for a subwoofer, but it is nice to have that option. And as specified by Kef, bass does reach down to 49 hertz. And doing a quick measurement using the Room EQ Wizard, does show the drop off around 4950 hertz. These aren't the flattest speakers, so maybe using them as reference monitors for professional mixing may not be ideal, but for my YouTube editing duties, I find them perfectly acceptable. Obviously, placement and room will affect sound quality. Moving these speakers out into the living room provided an even wider soundstage that wasn't available in my desktop setup. Popping in Fiona Apple's shadow boxer revealed those little delicate nuances as her lips opened and closed. Vocals came through crystal clear with no sibilance or ever making me wonder what she was saying. Even the piano section was full bodied and every key press had differentiating weight and liveliness. There's just some nice transparency to the sound that made these speakers disappear into the room. Now keep in mind, I did have the chair placed within a few feet away from the LSX's at a slightly higher than moderate level. If I move further away and wanted to really fill the room, that's where you'll see these little speakers show the kink in their armor. They will struggle to fill larger spaces as that fantastic mid-range gets a bit congested and strained and soundstage starts to collapse. You'll have to go with their bigger brother, the LS50s, if you have a bigger room to fill. Now, if you're just getting these for some non-critical listening and throwing in some Taylor Swift or some rap or pop song, you may not mind the dynamic limitations of these being so small. But it's hardly a surprise given the size, and they did perform much better than I expected with any genre of music. Now, I only use high-res tracks, which does get downsampled to 9624 if you have them tethered using the ethernet cable. Listening to these untethered and going straight wireless did sound slightly compressed, but just by a small margin. So if you wanna eke out every ounce of fidelity, you gotta tether these guys. I also didn't try these out with Spotify or Tidal because I'm not a subscriber to any service, but I would suspect they should sound very good on those. Now, the only other self-powered speakers like these that come to mind would be the new SVS Prime Wireless. They cost $600, so almost half the price of these, which are 1100 They share almost the same specs, so I'd be curious to see how they stack up against each other. So the one thing that really bugs me about the system is the fact that there are no controls on the actual speakers themselves. I was hoping like the LS50 wireless versions, 
which do have touch controls on top of one of the speakers, that those controls would find their way to the LSXs. This may or may not be an issue for some folks, but I don't always want to have to find the remote control or have to launch an app just to turn it on. It'd be nice if they could add a signal sensing feature to turn it on like a lot of subwoofers. Just keep it in standby until something plays through it. Maybe in a firmware update? Aside from that, I think these speakers are a great entry point into the higher end of powered audio. These are fantastic sounding in smaller to mid-sized rooms, but they're going to struggle in a larger space when pushed at louder levels. Now as far as convenience, the input connections make these a very versatile system. If you're trying to get away from the one box soundbar solution for your TV watching, the optical input should serve you just fine. And let's face it, stereo separation from two speakers versus speakers coming from one box, the soundbar doesn't stand a chance. Yeah, I know a soundbar may be less unobtrusive and more aesthetically pleasing under your TV. I get it. You also get Bluetooth streaming, so if you've got some guests over that want to pop in a quick song, you're covered. If you want to add more than one pair or if you've got some Apple HomePods, these will support Apple's AirPlay 2 for multi-room playback. As of this video, AirPlay 2 isn't available yet. If you're a subscription-based music user, Spotify and Tidal is on board using the KefStream app. So you've got options for this being a small, all-in-one high-end audio solution. No receiver or amplifier is needed. Oh, and they also come in different colors, so there should be something to fit every decor. It is a bit pricey, costing $1,100, but the sound quality, at least to me, I feel is worth the asking price. All right, that's all I've got for now. If you found this video useful, give it a like and let us know if you've heard these speakers and what'd you think of them. Be sure to check us out on social media. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys again in the next one.